What's up y'all, this is your boy Lucia Guy and I'm back with another video. This is going to be a mini Hell in a Cell review. I'm not going to sit here and talk about the whole damn pay-per-view. I'm only going to slide into the main event. And then I'm going to get into the preview for tomorrow or by the time this video is uploaded. Today's episode of Lucha Underground. But first I'm going to start this off talking about this damn Hell in a Cell show. But one thing I'm going to say, back in the day, you didn't have to wait once a year for a stupid ass pay-per-view called Hell in a Cell. There would be Hell in a Cell matches on Raw. Whether it would be a Hell in a Cell match on Raw with Kane and Mankind, or Fatal 4-Way, or Stone Cold, Undertaker... Kane, Mankind, or even an Undertaker, Shawn Michaels match. It would be a Hell in a Cell match on Raw back in the day. You didn't have to wait once a year. And even cage matches. How often do you even do cage matches nowadays on, on like regular TV? Raw and SmackDown for that matter. You rarely see that. The WWE is just lazy. I don't know if they're doing this shit to save money. Because I mean, it looks like to me they're putting in the, the best effort to these little Saudi Arabia, little greatest Royal Rumble, Super so Showdown shows. To me, look how they're already hyping up Undertaker with Kane versus Triple H with Shawn Michaels in his corner. Like, Summer Slam should have had that Undertaker. Take or Triple H Master to hyping up, or even Survivor Series. They're caring less about those shows. I mean, now they're just hyping up these little Saudi Arabia, little Aust Australia shows where they're getting, I guess, most of the little profit back, most of the little money at. But this Hell in the Cell show was just so overrated. The only like like match that people can really talk about and hype up was good was Randy Orton and Jeff Hardy. But I'll get into that in a second. This match right here was just so damn stupid. It was just so damn dumb. Like Mick Foley got he tossed off sales. He got put through so much hell back in the day. Beat up with barbed wires, all kind of shit. Hit upside the head. Put through th thumbtacks. Yet he gets maced by freaking Paul Heyman and he's laid out screaming. This is so stupid. And these guys shouldn't even been inside Hell in a Cell. Because what was the point of Hell in a Cell, people? It's to stop outside interference, right? Yet Brock Lesnar came out anyway, busted open the damn door, came inside the cell, F5 Braun Strowman, F5 Roman Reigns, and then this match just ended with no, like, no winner, no contest. That's stupid. From what I heard, AJ Styles and Samoa Joe was supposed to be inside Hell in a Cell, but they got booted out just for uh, Roman and Strowman. This match didn't even need a damn Hell in a Cell. These guys could have just fought in a damn, it could have been a street fight. They could have brought Brock Lesnar out anyway. They, he could have just walked down the ring. They didn't need a cell for that. Because it made the cell look stupid. The red cell ripping off TNA. I know TNA was busting shots. They had the red cell first with the, uh, um, the lockdown. A Salia match or whatever the hell it was called. Yeah. WWE's getting lazy running out, of, running out of um ideas. And why is there only two matches inside Hell in a Cell? Out of all these matches. So there can only be two. Jeff Hardy and Randy Orton did a good job. But people talking about that match was so dangerous. It was one of the most gruesome matches. What the hell people smoking. You can tell it's just WWE fanboys who only watch WWE. But so far, nothing's topped since I've been watching wrestling since the year 2000. Nothing's topped this match for us, the most gruesome hardcore match. This match from Lucha Underground, Ultima Lucha 3 from last year. This, the Hell of War match, the three stages of war. Even my mom can take this match. This match was crazy. I mean, and speaking of which, where the hell is Dante Fox at in season four of Lucha Underground? Some people said he saw him in a trailer. Try to watch the trailer. All I got was just some guy in an army outfit. I'm have to talk about that another day. But I didn't straight up see Dante Fox in a trailer. It would have been cold if he would have came in at this point when all uh, kill shot turned heel. It would have been cool if we got a Dante Fox coming in now. Because what we could have had out of Dante Fox is he could have came in with that Desmond Xavier guy, Desmond X or whatever, they could have been this them two, they could have been brothers. They could have been going after kill shot and and kill I mean it would have been a good feud. If we could have had some kind of big old battle with kill shot like kill shot versus Dante Fox with um Desmond X in his corner versus the Mac with Sons of Havoc in his corner. Could have been a good old match at um Ultima Lucha 4, but I don't know. Hopefully he does come in because it was even cool. Like after this match, the next episode we had got even this match. It was Mac Kill Sean Dante Fox versus the Reptile Tribe. And by the way, the Reptile Tribe ain't shit now. The, um this um what's his name? Dagger's alright, but Jeremiah Snake is just making that group look so stupid. These masks made the group look cool. 
cool. Everybody had their own masks, their own colors. It made the group look cool. This this is like definitely the most um this match right here was the most hardcore match I ever seen. I don't know what these little WWE fanboys are gassing up with this hell in the cell shit with Jeff Hardy and Randy Orton. But this must be some people who just started watching WWE or didn't even catch old school ECW or don't even watch nothing else. Cause I didn't see nothing that was even like hardcore or hell in the cell. Definitely wasn't that weak ass man event with Roman and Strowman with Brock Lesnar busting out. That the match definitely wasn't. That match definitely wasn't uh, hardcore. Some people lowering their standards in this current bad state that we're in in pro wrestling. Wrestling, like, i never seen it so low. It's just in a really, like, lame, dark place. Yes, Lucha Underground is good. New Japan Pro Wrestling doing their thing. RH doing their thing. Impact or TNA or whatever. Impact Wrestling, they're getting their groove back by borrowing Lucha Underground talent. Like, everybody's getting their groove back or doing their thing or whatever in their own way. But WWE, WWE is the worst. Speaking of rich... For the people that say Pentagon and Phoenix are leaving Lucha Underground and CMLL and Impact, no, they're not. They they, they just signed a deal to the end of 2019 with CMLL. And those guys are signed up anywhere for tons of more seasons of Lucha Underground. So Pentagon and Phoenix aren't going anywhere. So to stop reading these rumors and these reports, half of these reports aren't even reported from them. These are, I think it's just rather woke culture or some clowns in the comment section. But this is with me talking about Hell in a Cell and the three stages of war match. This is um me showing you, because one thing I want to get into though, Lucha Underground, they're not doing a very good job of hyping up their YouTube channel. They're only doing, showing this on their social media, whether it's on Facebook or their Instagram. And this is a preview to the next episode of Lucha Underground right here. It's time. So Killer Cross looks like he's going to be back, hopefully. Hopefully we get some answers with Phoenix Dark. So he's still going to be spazzing out on Melissa Santos. I'll try to show you again because it went fast. So yeah, Killer Cross is coming. Hopefully we get in-ring action when I'm soon. That three-way look like it's going to be badass, people. Melissa Santos, like she's gonna be standing up to Phoenix. Oh, Phoenix kicking the shit out of uh, Phoenix, like gonna be kicking the shit out of Edo Star. Says, so it's Melissa Santos pointing at Phoenix like, you better stay away from me. I can't wait to see this. We need some answers. Good, by the way, if they flop and don't do, not flop, but if they fuck up and don't do Pentagon Dark or Phoenix Dark versus Pentagon Dark, then this show, I don't know what to say because this, this right now, this is Phoenix's best work since I've seen him. He's always been a good in-ring performer, but now they're developing more of a character. And I'm telling you, this is, has something to do with Katrina. I wouldn't be surprised that this is Katrina's soul or spirit inside Phoenix because this is just odd because why is he like, because I mean, what would he have against Melissa Santos so bad? This has to be Katrina's doing, but you guys let me know what you think about this down below, and um, let me know what you guys thought about Hell in a Cell or whatever. This is your boy Lucha Guy, I'm out, peace. The Lucha Underground Review should be on Friday this week, people. Peace, later.